Yeah, I just wanted to say, I'll meet my mom. I'll meet my mom in the theater in the city center. <laughs> and I just wanted you to praise me, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. <Thanks>. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite good. Based on the popularity of our first lesson, teaching you different words in American, British, and Australian English, in today's lesson, you will learn pronunciation differences. Some of these are quite surprising, and you are guaranteed to laugh. And quickly, before we get started, if you are new here, well, every week we help you to understand fast speech, to be understood by anyone, and to connect to the world like real lifer Maria, who is overcoming her fear of making mistakes. And we can help you to feel more confident too. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and the bell below so that you won't miss any lessons. We have three different sentences that we're going to look at. So Ollie, Andrea, and I are each going to say the sentence and we'll look at some of the different pronunciation that we make when we say some of the different words, all right? Andrew, do you want to do the honors and go first? Sure. What do you say we meet this afternoon for a coffee? Sounds very proper, Andrea. <laughs> I would say, what do you say we meet this afternoon for a coffee? And I would say, what do you say we meet this avo for a coffee? I think that the Australian and American are almost the same, except for how you said afternoon. How'd you say that? So, uh, I, first of all, we shorten afternoon to avo. And then we connect the S from this onto Avo, so we say this Avo, this Avo. This avocado. This avocado, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if, if I said to you, what are you doing this Avo, would you guys understand what I mean? I think I might because we don't really use this a lot in the UK, but I have heard some people say Avo instead of afternoon. Ah, it's because there's so many Australians working in bars in London. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and in the States, I think it would be like, uh, what are you doing this avocado? So it wouldn't really make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite funny. So both Ollie and I said, what do you say, right? You mm. said it pretty much like that, right? What do you say? How did you say that, Andrea? So I would say, what do you say? So maybe just, um, maybe just reduce the you a little bit, or what'd you say? We might also say, what'd you say? We meet this afternoon for a coffee. So we definitely, in, in the US and Australia, we definitely like connect it all a lot more, like the T and D kind of morph into one. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do the honors with sentence B, Ollie? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, here we go. This is the weirdest grocery list ever. Tomatoes, potatoes, yogurt, banana, oregano, and mayonnaise. <laughs> this one's going to have really loads of differences. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the weirdest grocery list ever. Tomatoes, potatoes, yogurt, banana, oregano, and mayonnaise. Yogurt? Yeah, <laughs> not yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say this is the weirdest grocery list ever. Tomatoes, potatoes, yogurt, banana, oregano, and mayonnaise. <laughs> Did we all say that one differently? I said it really different from you guys. Oregano. Andrea, you say? Oregano. Oregano. But you Oregano. guys said yogurt Oregano. the same way, I think. Yogurt. <laughs> I feel like Australians yogurt. are confused. We're like stuck in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, I just want to point out that in the UK, we probably wouldn't call this a grocery list we would call it a shopping list, mm -hmm. and yeah, by that you too. mean the supermarket list. Yeah, that's mm. the same in Australia, actually. In the US, that would make sense, but we usually would say grocery list, I think is more colloquial. Mm. But something that's like really surprising for me is that you guys don't say potatoes, but you say tomatoes. So we say tomatoes, potatoes, so they rhyme with each other because they're, they're spelled pretty much the same. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, did you say it the same as Ethan, Ollie? I said tomatoes, potatoes. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. Tomatoes, potatoes. You do the kind of flap T a bit more, don't mm -hmm. you as well? Yeah, mm. whereas we don't so much. And banana? Banana. Banana. 
Banana. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's too easy. I'm sorry, Ethan. It's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe I pronounced it wrong when I actually read this, but we'd probably say um, mayonnaise. We kind of like take out some sounds there. Oh. I would say you mayonnaise. Say, yeah, mayonnaise. So you say mayonnaise. There you, go. you kind of merge. We just say the... it really wrong. I'll I'll take the we we we're like missing out half of that word. And do you shorten it and say mayo? Mayo, yeah, we could say mayo. Okay. Do you need to understand natives even when we speak really fast? Well, we have the most fun way to do it. It's with our Fluent with Friends course. You can learn the vocabulary that we natives really use and never forget it. You'll improve your pronunciation and understand every joke. And you will learn it all with friends which various academic studies show is the best TV series to learn English. The best part? You can try it for free right now with our three-part masterclass. Just click up here or down in the description below. I would say my cell phone fell in the water. I guess I'll have to get a new one today. And I would say my phone fell in the water. I guess I'll have to get a new one today. And I would say my mobile fell in the water. I guess I'll have to get a new one today. So we all call our, mm. like our mobile or our phone something different. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Mobile, Interesting. mobile, I think of like a mobile home, maybe more. Like one of those homes that looks like it could be traveled with. Well, exactly, because I think of like a, a mobile, because you know how you had the phones in the olden days that were like on the wall and you couldn't move? And then mobiles, mm. mobile phones came out, and I, I imagine that is them. like moving around. <laughs> what you're, what you were saying, Ethan. <laughs> Although nowadays, I'm not sure people use that as much with like smartphones. But uh, yeah, you'd say my my cell phone, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure exactly what that comes from. I think actually the the British one makes more sense. Yeah, I agree. It's just always been a mobile phone for us. So my mobile. I said water. How would you say that, Andrea? A lot of people might already know this one. Yeah, so with a true T, we say water, but if you use a glottal T, you would say water. I have a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> and you say water. 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 <laughs> water, yeah, water. so it's like really, you pronounce the R's a lot more, don't you? Exactly, and that flat T. Would you be in the middle, Ollie? Again, I would be in the middle. I would say water. So the flat T water. with the A at the end, with the ER. So I'm kind of like taking a, a bit of what Andrew says and a bit of what Ethan says and, you know, making a brand new word. <laughs> yeah, so you kind water. of have the, the schwa there as well, like us, mm -hmm. with words that end in ER and things exactly. like that. And how did you guys say today? Because for me, since it's had one before it, I said um, one today. So I, I made that first T into an American T. So it sounds like a D, one today. Today, today. Yeah, I said today as well. So it does sound like a T today. There you go. You said it really fast. You're like... more British there, Ollie. Mm, I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually gonna kind of play this as a game we're calling Guess What? in which each person will say some sort of local expression from their part of the world, and the other two are going to try to guess what that could possibly mean, and you can play along with us. So, I think Ollie is going to do the honors because they have some pretty crazy slang down under. <laughs> we do. So, Ethan and Andrea, what do you think the word fair dinkum means? Hmm, okay, so the first thing that comes to my mind when thinking fair dinkum is like maybe something like fair enough or when when you might say fair do's like okay that's fair enough something like that okay mm, yeah okay the only thing i thought of is like dinkum what could dinkum possibly be we have it makes me think of like there's a kid's song it's like rink a dink a bottle of ink that's like when your kids are trying to like choose you know i don't know something they'll they'll do this kind of like little song that's the only thing i can think of so Yes. Something maybe having to do with children? No, so I think dinkum originated from when uh, the gold rush back in the day because a lot of people from all over the world, especially Asia, came to Australia and they think dinkum uh, came mm. from that, but it's still not known. But if I, if I say he's a fair dinkum Aussie or she's a fair dinkum Aussie, it means they are a true, they are a real, they are a genuine person. 
Um, mm. But you can also use fed income ah. out of frustration as well. If, you, if you're watching the news and you're not happy with what's going on or, or your prime minister or your president made a bad decision, you could say, oh, fed income, mate. It's like, oh, I don't believe what I'm seeing. <laughs> We talked about on one of the podcasts, True Blue, as being like another, so it's a similar way that you would say that then. Yeah, definitely. You could definitely, uh, it's a comparison. Hey, if you haven't yet, be sure to check out part one of this lesson where we looked at vocabulary differences in American, Australian, and British English. You will find that linked up here and down in the description below. Okay, my turn. What would its blitz mean? So I'm not sure if you're re- lit. <laughs> I'm not re- sure if you're referring to the weather or you're just saying that a situation is really fantastic, really good. Interesting. What do yeah, you think? It could be like been? blitz in German is like lightning, I believe. So maybe it could have to do with the weather. I know you guys tend to have bad weather there <laughs> in the UK. I would think it could also be like something maybe like on the, along the same lines, like something really fast or something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you both had kind of the right idea. So it is to do with the weather, but it means that it's freezing. (laughs) Oh. Yeah, so it's a slang way of saying it. So you'd probably say it a lot with your friends. Oh, it's blitz today, it's blitz. And it basically means it's absolutely freezing. I've never heard that before. Good one. I'm gonna start using that one. (laughs) I had to find a new one as well because I've kind of, um, tested Ethan quite a lot on the podcast, so right. <laughs> he's learned quite a few new ones. So I had to really think outside the box for this one. <laughs> this is a really great one for Colorado, actually, because you could hear people say it quite a bit. So if I say pow, what do you guys think that means? Oh. I, I have no idea with this one, pow. Okay, so initially my thoughts are like pow if someone like hits you <laughs> and you think pow it's a fair guess um i can't think of anything else so, so i was thinking maybe if it's something that happens like suddenly and you don't expect it it's kind of like pow wow mm, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so you guys are way off oh. here it's uh, the reason i say colorado we have really great skiing snowboarding colorado people come from all over to experience that. And when there's really good snow, we'll call it powder. We'll say like, for example, that it snowed 10 inches yesterday and it was a total powder day up at the ski area. So we shorten that to pow, you know. Wow. I would not have known that. That's <laughs> Never. good to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right. Ollie, are you gonna try to stump us again? Yeah, I've got another one for you. Uh, dog's breakfast. <laughs> Well, I just recently got a puppy, so I happen to know that my dog's breakfast is something I would never want to eat, so maybe it could be something really disgusting. Okay, all right, almost. (laughs) Yeah, I'm wondering if this is similar to one we have in the UK. So sometimes we might describe something as a dog's dinner in the UK, and that would mean that it was awful, like maybe you had something and it tasted terrible. Mm, Okay, yeah, so you're referring to food, right? So yeah. we, we, you could also refer this to food, but if you say something was a dog's breakfast, um, it means it was really chaotic, messy, disorganized. So for example, their wedding was a dog's breakfast. The meeting at work was a dog's breakfast. It was really chaotic, <laughs> it didn't go to plan, and yeah. Okay. That sounds like in the States we might call like a hot mess. It was a hot mess is like a really colloquial way to say that something was really chaotic, really mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I've heard that before. Okay, what would it mean if I said it was a shambles? Okay, so I think this one is very <laughs> similar to a dog's breakfast, right? What do you think, Ethan? I've heard the expression that someone's life is in shambles, for example. It's like their life is a wreck. Okay, yeah, so obviously, Ollie, I had no idea that you were going to be sharing dog's <laughs> breakfast and I have no idea what it means anyway. So as soon as you described it, I was like, oh, it's the same as my one. <laughs> it was a shambles, yeah. So it means that something was terrible, disorganized, chaotic. It's mm. often a way that we describe the football sometimes when we're watching our team play and they are very disorganized and look like they've never played together before mm-hmm. <laughs> um, or an event or something. Yeah. So, well done. 
That's quite funny, isn't it? That we got this, that we thought of the same one, but it's completely yeah. different. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what does it mean if I say clutch? Which I'd use it to describe something. I could say like, the weekend was clutch. Oh, because I was going to say like to grab something. <laughs> That's the literal meaning, right? You yeah. clutch something in your hand or yeah. something like that. But we actually use it as an adjective. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, because I was also thinking of like a clutch bag, which is a bag that you carry in your hand. Um, so you use it as an adjective. So to describe something as clutch, Three is it kind of like fetch in Mean Girls? I, I'm not familiar enough with that movie to remember what that means. Yeah, so she was trying to make fetch happen, which is describing something as really cool or amazing. What would your guess be, Ollie? Yeah, I, again, I think I'm... Uh, if, you, if you... With the sentence that you used about, like, the weekend was really clutch, uh, I think it could only mean good or bad. So I'm going to go, the weekend was <laughs> super awesome, super cool. That's right. That's exactly yeah. right. Woo <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maybe you guys might think it was like another way to say like, you know, dog's breakfast or shambles or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but this one's actually more positive than that. So it's actually one I wouldn't really use this, but when I've gone back to the States, because I've since I've been out of the States for a while, it's like a, it's more popular now. A lot of my friends use it. So mm. instead of saying like it was awesome or it was amazing or something, they might say it was really clutch. Yeah. I think in Australia we would say uh, the weekend was really sick or the weekend was really rad. Mm. We could say that too, but that sounds kind of 90s in the US. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Ethan, you're saying we're old again. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? <laughs> Well, maybe it just takes a while to arrive in Australia. I mean, it's got to, you know, like the old movies, the series, they got to go on a boat. Well, we actually do. We receive movies like three months after the US. <laughs> well, there you go. Mm. Right now, we're going to start with vocabulary differences. So we will look at some different pictures and basically each of us will say what we'd call that in our part of the world. So are you guys ready? Bring it on. Ready. All right. So this first one, how would you call that, Andrea? This is, of course, a pepper. I almost agree with you. I would call that. 